All right. So this is this was the last screen that uh, we looked at. Uh, it was the stickers on the ladder, and uh, we were talking about the uh, setup. Where is that? Okay, the setup, the duty rating of the uh, step ladders or ladders. Right? Uh, now, uh, then those uh, that information can be found on the stickers, and I would encourage you to just take a straw uh, in the hardware store of your choice and look at the ladders, step ladders, look for those stickers, see what you can tell by those stickers. So they should be, they should look something like this, unless something has changed, maybe slightly, maybe they put some section here, some section there, but uh, generally they, sh they should look like this. They, sh they should give you this information that we just talked about last time. All right, extension ladders. So we talked about the step ladders. So these are, this is a, typical step ladder and its anatomy. And now we're going to talk about something that's called an extension ladders, right? Slightly different. See the difference already? Mm, extension ladder is same as a straight ladder, but it consists of two sections. One is a stationary section and then the other one is extended section. And you can fold it into one piece or you can uh, extend that. So that's why it's called extension ladder. Uh, okay, how is this constructed? All right, so the, um, uh, the stationary section is called a base section. So that's the base section right here. And the thing that slides on it, it's called a fly section. And it does have a rope pulley system uh, in order to be, is for you to be able to extend the ladder. So, uh, um, uh, okay, so the side things are called rails, side rails, and uh, instead of the steps, we are called these things that we step on, we call them rungs, right? These are rungs. And uh, pretty much they are spread apart, one foot apart. So between one and the other is one foot. So you can tell uh, how long the ladder is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve rungs here. So uh, twelve feet, just if you fold it. Uh, and if you fully extend it, you're probably going to have something like twenty feet because you're not going to fully extend. So this things, uh, the fly section and the base section are just touching each other. They have to overlap somehow. So this would be considered as a 20 foot extension ladder. Right? Uh, all right. And here's a reference of uh, the, where I get this thing, uh, this picture from. All right. All right. The proper setup for the extension ladder. We have a little bit of that. Uh, consider the placement and the pitch of the ladder. So placement and the pitch, secure and stabilize the ladder. And we're going to expand on these two ideas as we go along right now. All right, as far as the pitch, what is a pitch? A pitch is the, the how it leans, right? Is it straight or is it leaning more? Or is it leaning more? Or is it leaning more? So that's the pitch, right? And uh, it says that we should have something that's called four to one pitch. What does it mean? For every four feet of height or height, <laughs> height. <laughs> um, I hate you with four feet. Okay. Uh, uh, for every four feet of height, the bottom of the ladder should be one foot away. So, if this is 12 feet high, it's in a straight line. So divide that by four, and it's going to tell you how far you should have this ladder from the face of the surface. That's the proper pitch. What happens if you um, have less than that of a ratio, which means the bottom of the ladder is going to be closer to the face of the building than it should be. Then as you climb the ladder, 
there's a chance of you um, producing the center of gravity of the whole system, which the system would be you and the ladder, uh, that you're going to pull the ladder with you and you're just going to collapse. On it's going to, you're going to pull the ladder towards itself, towards yourself, and you're going to fall down backwards with the ladder. If you put that further than you should, then there's a chance that as you climb the ladder, is well, first of all, it's going to be less comfortable than it should be. And second, there is a huge, and I'm talking huge chance of that ladder just sliding down because you're going to put too much uh, pressure on the on this interface right here, which where the ladder meets the wall, uh, and it's going to, you're going to make it slide down. So you're going to make it so for the comfort of climbing and for the safety of using one, I mean, four to one pitch. So if it's a 20 foot, uh, you just look at how high this is. Yeah. And it's going to tell you how far you should extend the bottom of the, the base of the ladder. So if it's a 20 foot height, then you should extend that five feet and uh, you do this so you don't get kicked off the site by the uh, safety officer so that's one reason of doing that but the most important reason is even if nobody is watching uh, the gravity can be really nasty when uh, the higher you get the harder you fall, as they say. Right. Mm, it's the way how things work on this planet. Uh, so you only have one life and you only have one health. Okay, enough for the Venn by the River motivation speech. All right. Proper height extension ladders. When accessing another level, the ladder must extend three feet, at least three feet. Well, 0 0.9 watt, well, it's basically one meter above the landing surface to provide a handhold for getting on and off the ladder. If you ever tried, if the ladder was just like one foot, getting on and off this ladder can be really uncomfortable. And if you're outside and it's cold and slippery, then you're setting yourself up for some trouble. So uh, well, in order to be legal here, where we are, this is the landing surface. So when you come, when you climb the ladder from the bottom to the top, and you're going to step onto the roof, so that roof is becoming your landing surface. So when you secure the ladder, when you, uh, when you, um, mount the ladder in this scenario the ladder should extend at least three feet above the landing surface so you can comfortably get on and off this ladder how do we know one two three and a little bit that's fine the distance between the prongs is one foot so it's easy to tell. Okay, what do we have next in store? Secure and stabilize the ladders. What does, like we have some two statements. Extension ladders should be secured at the top or bottom to prevent movement. The base of an extension ladder must be secured in place by using safety feet on the ladder or other effective means. Well, yeah, let's see. Uh, the first statement, extension ladders should be secured at the top or bottom to prevent movement. I would prefer, whenever I use ladder, I would prefer securing the ladder at the top. The best thing would be to secure the ladder at the top and at the bottom to prevent movement. Um, securing the ladder at the top prevents from the ladder swinging sideways and whatnot, and prevents the ladder from tipping over onto you. 
securing it at the bottom it's going to just secure the uh, feet of the ladder the base of the ladder so it's going to prevent from sliding away from the surface of the face of the of the wall all right uh, but it is not going to prevent the ladder from the, the ladder from tipping either onto you as you climb it or on uh, towards the sides okay. so the best thing would be and it's your life when it comes to safety like this or any kind of safety uh, you are taking care of your own self so secure the ladder at the top and at the bottom even though it says or the base of the extension ladder must be secure you know, da, 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 da. well um the longer you work the longer you spend the longer you spend time on site different sites the longer you're in the work field the more loaded statements like that are and when i see things like this these two sentences about 20 or 30 years ago they would be just statements to me and yeah i would say i agree it's a good idea now after 30 plus years of working in the field and doing all kinds of jobs performing all kinds of jobs in all kinds of places when i see this i get pictures from my experience that flash before my eyes and i'm not sure if you could sense that in my voice or not but uh, i have seen some situations firsthand that um, i would agree a hundred percent with these two statements And I just hope that as you go along, you will not have your reasons for your voice to change. Right. Okay. All right, secure and stabilize the ladders continuing. All right, so here's a tie off at the top. Easy, right? Doesn't take much. Just tie the damn thing off whenever you can. If you can't tie it off to any kind of a post here, try to tie it off to the surface in some sort of way. Like here, for example. Well, that's it for this slide. <laughs> Secure and stabilize ladders continuing. Securing the ladders at the bottom. Here's a correct example of securing the ladder at the bottom. Put some, drive some stakes in the ground, put some, put some board, uh, do whatever you can in order to stabilize the ladder at the bottom. If it's a muddy bottom, I would just say, don't use the ladder. Here is an incorrect way of securing a ladder. Here's a foot that is flipped around. It is not, uh, it is not uh, put properly. But also, actually in the sand like that, you would actually do that. So this, the, the bottom of it digs in. If it's a flat surface, you would flip the foot so it stands on, the, on this surface right here. But look, that foot is missing here. Looks like the ladder is incomplete. And somebody just put some sort of a rock in there to stabilize the ladder. And that's when my voice changes because I've seen somebody done that. And I felt that person fell. I felt that through my feet before I could hear that person fell. Luckily nothing happened, but I lost five years out of my life running around the corner of the building to see a dead body. Uh, but uh, somehow he fell in a way that uh, he just, twisted his wrists um, but <laughs> and I've seen other things once you get exposed to some real situations your perspective some of the perspectives do change trust me <laughs> all right secure and stabilized ladder is continuing 
uh, whenever you can, sometimes whenever you have to, you could use something that's called stabilizers. The higher the ladder is, the, of course, the, mm, the greater well, chances are of the ladder tipping sideways. Right? So if you, uh, if you extend the top surface of that, you're stabilizing the ladder a little bit more. Now, when you have uneven surface, there are something that's called foot extensions. Here's a, stair, a step, and here's a no step, and here's a step. Look, this is a clever idea. Now, when you have something like that, make sure that this whole thing is intact, that there's no any damages, uh, structural damages uh, in any sort of way. If there is any damage, if there is any insecurity when it comes to that, just think about it. You are raising yourself above the ground um, 10, 15 feet sometimes. Uh, the highest I went on the ladder was um, 30 feet. And um, let me tell you, 30 feet standing on an extension ladder is high. Um, yeah. Um, but that was a long time ago, before some of the regulations were implemented that we have now. Things were different some years ago. Not that long ago, actually. Step ladders. Uh, for the step ladders, uh, for some reason, this, um, this uh, presentation goes back to step ladders. Only use in fully open position on firm level ground. Fully open. See there are those, uh, there's those cross braces here. Right here, can you see that? I'm not sure if you, yeah, there's one here. And there's one on the other side. They should be fully open and locked. Um, sometimes people uh, do the, they fold the ladder and they lean it against the ground, uh, against the wall. That is not a good idea. Right? We've all done it at some point or another, but it is not a good idea to do that. It's not safe. Uh, all right. So only use the step ladder should be only used in the fully open position on firm level ground. Do not use a step ladder that is folded or in a leaning position. So that's what basically what I was talking about. You just uh, fold the ladder and lean it against the surface and you climb on it. All right. Um, don't do that. It's not designed to do that. Uh, never sit or uh, stand on the top two rungs or top two steps. Remember, and that is going to be on the test. Let me just quickly go back to the anatomy. Okay. Every step ladder, you never sit or stand on this top cap. You never sit or stand on this rung here that is just before the top so let's say this is the first uh, and this is the second last last right the highest your feet that you, the, the fire the highest that your feet can go is this rung right here or this step right here so counting from the top one two three that's the one you should not be standing on this and you should definitely not be standing on this. Are you going to see people do that? You will see people do that. You don't do that, right? You know, let's say if everybody jumped in the fire, would you jump in the fire? So maybe you could change that. If any, everybody was standing on the top of the ladder, would you stand too? Yeah, well, where were we? All right. Only use in the fully, okay, do not step on the, never sit or sit on top to ranks. Consider work height when selecting a step ladder. So, um, well, if you take a look at this table here, uh, or where is it, maximum reach. Okay, here's a sticker, all right? So here's a step ladder sticker. Here is uh, over here, and here is the uh, extension ladder sticker. All right, uh, look at this. Here's a six foot step ladder. Here's a 24 foot extension ladder, and look at that maximum reach, 10 feet. That's based on the average person's height. Right? 
now you will know your height how it is and you can tell how far you can reach or how high you can reach by standing on the ground and then uh, you can but take a look at this so consider the height of the ladder or the height of the climbing uh, area that you're going to do uh, where are we here consider the work height when selecting a step ladder or well as a matter of fact also you're going to have to consider the height of the ladder when you consider, when you choose the extension ladder as well right now when it comes to climbing techniques face the ladder when ac accessing oh sorry face the ladder when ascending or descending which means face the ladder the ladder should be in front of you you're going to see sometimes some people climbing the ladder um, I don't want to say backwards but uh, it's just like on sitting on the ladder facing away from the ladder and going up and down no and if something happens to you and if somebody proves that you were doing something wrong then you're in more trouble than you originally would be so don't do that right? face the ladder when ascending or descending maintain three points of contact at all times all right we have four points of contact that we can um, um, we can operate with we have one hand we have another hand we have foot and another foot so it's four one two three and four if we're standing on the ladder with two feet and we're holding the ladder with our two hands, we have four points of contact. Well, in order to climb, you're going to have to detach one of your contact points in order to change your position of the contact. Because that's how you go up and how you go down. You, you will not go up or down if you just keep holding and standing, right? So, it says maintain three points of contact that means you can only let go with one with one hand or the other hand or with one foot or the other the other foot at all times make sure that you have three points of contact so it's either two feet and two in one hand or the other or if it's two hands and one foot you guys have to be conscious of that in the beginning but if you practice doing that it's going to enter your as i say enter your bloodstream and you will do it without thinking it's we are habitual creatures as humans so um once we develop a proper habit uh, we are then, then the tasks that we have to do become effortless right so get into good habits and you will not have to strain to do the right thing all right keep your body all right so these two statements go together keep your body centered on the ladder never let your belt buckle pass either side rail where's the anatomy of the ladder yeah okay so here's a side rail here's another side rail you should never let the belt bucket leave any of the side rails what does that mean i'm sure you remember let me just get my board here mm, that should be fine here all right i'm sure you have um Okay, I'm getting myself some sort of other. I'm sure you remember from your physics classes or from your science classes, something that's called the center of gravity. If you have an object and if you hang a plum, like a level here, plum level on a string, this will be the center of gravity. And if you calculate the length of the string, you can actually put that little weight 
on right into the center of the gravity of the object, whatever it is. Here's the base of the object. And it has certain length. All right. If you start tipping the object, let's say this way here. And let's say the center of gravity is going to stand like that. So here will be the center of gravity of this object. This object, you can tip it as far as keeping the center of the gravity within the base of the, within the shadow of its base. If you tip, this object far enough that the center of the gravity leaves the shadow of the base here yeah? so it's beyond the base then the object is going to tip there's no ifs ands or buts about it it's the law of physics is whatever is the logic of existence on our planet in our plane of existence So the object is going to not tip as long as the center of the gravity remains within the shadow of its base. If the center of gravity, I'm just repeating that, leaves the shadow of the base, if it just leaves a little bit, that's it. This thing goes down. So, Here's the statement, keep your body centered on the ladder. Never let your belt bucket pass either side rail. What this means is that sometimes when we are standing on the ladder, we are going to have to reach sideways to either grab a piece of wire or, 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 or reach some sort of a device or whatever. For whatever reason, you're going to reach sideways. And it says, let ne never let your belt buckle pass either of the side rail. It is estimated that more or less where your belt buckle is, that's your center of your gravity as a human being. And arbitrarily almost, but based on experience, if you reach far enough that your belt buckle leaves goes beyond any of the side rails then you're going to tip and when you tip the ladder the ladder goes down and if you're standing on it well guess what's going to happen with you you're going to go down with the ladder so i know sometimes it could be tempting because maybe it's a friday afternoon and you are really you know, your friends are waiting at some sort of a establishment. Yeah, it has a it was a long hard week. Let's just go and enjoy some cold beverage on this uh, hot summer evening. And you just have to finish your job, your work, and you're going to meet them. That's when the accidents happen. It's okay. Your friends can wait five more minutes. It's going to take you maybe a couple minutes or something like that to climb off the ladder, move it a couple feet left or right, so you can go up on it again and just do whatever you have to do. You are going to lose a minute or two out of your life. Oh my God, all right, skies are falling. But if you don't, the price to pay would be that you could lose a lot more minutes uh, out of your life and your life can change in that one short decision. So overreaching is quite common for people to fall off the ladders. The other thing is uh, not proper positioning, but, uh, but we're talking about this center of gravity. Now you know, if you haven't before, 
what it means as far as center of gravity. So if you are a human being, all right, here, here is your belt, here is your belt buckle, all right? And here are your two hands. All right, so if you're climbing on the ladder, here's the ladder, never let your belt buckle go uh, beyond any of the side rails of this ladder, all right? Because that's where you say, uh, well, doesn't mean that uh, because you can you can just uh, position your way yourself in a certain way that your belt buckle is going to leave and the rest of you is going to be there but that's not the point it's the general rule but the truth is don't let the center of gravity your center of gravity leave the side of the rail any of the side rails because if you do you are going to go down I think I have rolled this idea enough. Anybody, sh everybody should understand what I'm saying here. Maintain a safe position on the ladder. All right, so wh what's happening here? This person is facing the ladder as he's climbing or coming down from the ladder. Doesn't matter. He's on the ladder. He is facing the ladder. Now, is that the last uh, slide or did we? Uh, yeah, that was the belt buckle. Um, he's facing the ladder. He's maintaining right now at this point, one, two, three, four points of contact. Only let go of one so the other three can be can maintain contact with the ladder at any given point of time. What else he is not doing that is wrong? Well, he has his hands free. He is not carrying any tools in his hands. He has the uh, tool belt. But the best thing would be is that climb the ladder, come onto the landing surface, and have a pail and a rope so you can pull your tools up on the pail, up in the pail, into the landing, onto the landing surface. That would be the best thing. This is the second best thing, having some tools, because sometimes you're just going to have your tools with you. Just make sure that they are not crazy overloading um, so uh, to the point that you can actually put yourself in some dangerous uh, situation. Right? Is that the last slide? That's the last slide. Aluminum versus fiberglass. Huh. When we are working with electrical systems, what happens with aluminum? Aluminum, or as they say in Great Britain, aluminium, um, is conductive, it's metal. So if you're working, excuse me, if you're working with uh, electricity, it would be a good idea to not use a metal ladder if you can help it. Simply because if something touches the ladder, uh, the electricity can flow through that metal onto you. And if you touch something else, uh, the possibilities are endless but why giving the accident possibility more chance than it they all that it already has so when it comes to working uh, with electrical stuff and even if not the wires and all kinds of things are always in proximity try to use the fiberglass ladder over the aluminum ladder. I know the aluminum ladder is lighter to carry and sometimes that's all you have. Well, if that's all you have, that's all you have. You're just going to have to be careful. But 
it is not a good idea to use aluminum ladder while working around electricity. Of course, when you're working a lot with, uh, with electricity, the um, uh, while you are working on wiring and all that panels and stuff, of course, the whole power should be shut down. But we are preventing accidents from happening and accidents are not planned. So what if somebody turns the power on by accident somewhere else that it powers up you? What if there is something that you're not aware of from another electrical panel that you think that the power is off, but maybe there's something there. So it's trying to eliminate any kind of a chance. And the, the more you eliminate as far as chances for accidents, the safer you are. So ladders use fiberglass. They are heavier to carry. Well, so be it. Uh, life isn't easy anyways. Right? Uh, but also the fiberglass ladders are more, um, they have, uh, they are a little bit better as far as longevity, which means they will last longer. They are tougher. Right? And, <coughs> excuse me, that is the last slide that uh, has to do with the uh, ladders uh, portion of the ladders and scaffolds. Next week, we're going to tackle the scaffolds idea. And um, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Remember, uh, if you just uh, joined us later, we do have participants, 12, there are a few people. Uh, I'm just going to remind uh, as far as Let's say Google again. Remember the pipe bending? They were I'll always throw something uh, in as pipe bending. Uh, well, ideal, that's what the ideal or claim. Okay, so I ideal bender guide. All right, Google, here's the conduit bender guide. Click on that, you get the PDF version. And I have uh, put that uh, for you to download as well. All right, uh, and it's a PDF. You can download that as PDF and you can view it and then we can print it or whatnot, all right? This is all the guide uh, that has to do with the ideal pipe bender. And also if you, instead of that, uh, you type claim bender guide, yeah, content bender guide by claim tools, click on that and you get the claim. Those two documents are pretty cool. Right? They explain the basics of pipe bending. And I would really recommend that you familiarize yourself with those. They have those tables. Like for example, where's the offset bending guy? We're, we were practicing uh, some of the pipe bending, uh, offset, offset, offset. Where's the table that has to do with the offset? Uh, three point saddle. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, it's there, but I'm going, not going to try to find it. Let's, let's get the ideal. Because this is the one that we have, uh, those pipe benders. Uh, and if you go out to the making offsets, bam, 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 here's the offsets, offsets, here's the table. That's basically the sticker that is pretty much all the stickers are robbed off from the, um, from the using. But let's say, you want to make an offset like this here yeah? and the height of the obstacle is like let's say three inches right? and you choose 30 degree angle so it's going to you're looking at the table here so let's say here's you're trying to clear three inches obstacle right and you're going to choose the uh, you're going to choose the 30 degrees angle so here's 22 and a half degrees here's 30 here's 45 here's 60 but uh for the three inches uh, well they just want to give you the options of 22 and a half and 30. Yes, you can do it at 45, but I'm not sure if it makes sense or not. But you can still calculate that based on the way that I showed you last time, right? Uh, with using the multiplier. Okay? So here's how you read this table. If you want to clear the obstacle that is three inches high, and if you want to use the 30 degrees angle to clear that, then the distance between those two bend points is six inches and the whole thing is going to shrink quarter of an inch. What does that mean? 
if you have a straight line, the distance between this bending point and this bending point, well, 30 degrees. So this bending point and this bend, the bending point is going to be six inches. Uh, this is actually a six inches obstacle, so ignore that. Yeah? Uh, and um, the whole pipe is going to, like from here to here in the horizontal straight line, that whole pipe is going to sh uh, be shorter three quarters of an inch after you perform that bend. Of course, the whole straight length is going to be shorter because you are going up and uh, you're losing a little bit of length on that. Right, so this is how you use that table. So take a, uh, take a look at some of uh, those. And um, whenever you do the labs, you finish early, instead of just going home, just grab one of those pipe benders, grab a piece of pipe. We have lots of it. Make some marks on it. Decide what you want to do. Uh, want to practice doing an offset? Yeah, just whip out an offset. Why not? You know. Um, you're always going to learn something. And when it comes to pipe bending, the idea of that is, is that um, you learn by training your body to remember how hard to press onto something, how far to push it, how, how to position that. And you can't, you can't learn that by watching a video. You, that is one of those things that it has to be done kinesthetically, which means by doing the only thing so whenever you get a chance grab a pipe bender grab a piece of pipe and do something do a offset band do a 90 degree do a saddle or whatever do a kick just do something right and keep practicing so uh i just wanted to point you to those uh two pipe bender guides and go over those and just do one of those tasks that is on that pipe bender guide. These are the basics. Just go for it. Right? And the other thing is, I uh, I just want you to understand that this pipe bending thing, it is a skill, and a skill that is acquired by exposure, physical exposure to it. So you you have to touch the equipment. You have to work with the equipment you have to manipulate the equipment you have to mess it up a couple of times in order to learn of course not some people say if you don't screw it up you're not, you know you know you're not going to learn that's not entirely true but it's a common thing yes you're going to make some mistakes you're going to look at that that's the only way you can learn do not expect that once you grab a pipe bender and grab a piece of conduit EMT conduit or whatever else, don't expect that you're going to get a perfect work, uh, perfect job done uh, uh, first time around. If you do, bonus. It could be a beginner's luck or whatever, or you could just be that natural at it. But don't count on it. Don't expect that. Expect that you're going to, well, I wouldn't say expect because then you're going to aim for mistakes. No, aim for the perfection, but do not freak out. When you're going to uh, how you're going to find out that maybe you should improve on this, that, and the other thing. And the only, as I keep saying, for the hundredth time, the only way to learn this is to just practice as much as you possibly can. Right? Cool. All right, we got ten minutes to go to the next class, and. Um, by all means, send me an email. I always try to respond to all the emails that I get. And uh, remember, not too long ago, I said, hey, guys, it's almost Friday. And I was right, because when I said that, it was not that long ago. And look what happened. It is Friday. So enjoy your weekend, guys.